Yes, a letter for me. All right, welcome back to a, another installment of TTM Thursdays through the Mail Thursdays. Um, one thing that I forgot to point out in my first video that I uh, shot was that in the description below, I am going to put links to the um, athletes that are depicted in the video. So if you'd like to learn more about the particular individual that I get an autograph back you know, through the mail from, you can simply just click on the link below um, in the description. Um, another thing to mention about my channel is, is I'm shooting this off the cuff. My uh, cat just literally walked past me, so if uh, you happen to hear a meow or something like that, um, I'm sorry, I'll try to edit it out the best that I can. But uh, to further uh, move on in the process, I have, let's see, four through the mail envelopes to go through. So we will start right at the top here. And the first person that we are going to open up here is going to be from Mr. Dick Schofield Sr. Now I have um, some pretty cool things to say about Mr. Schofield. Uh, first of all, I have met him in person. Uh, he is a very nice man. I've had the opportunity to see him a couple times and as you can see on that card I actually had his son already signed, which I've all also seen in person before. But uh, Mr. Schofield was a Cardinal originally. He uh, came up very young when he was a rookie, I believe, and 18 years old in 1953. And he was a uh, good ball player, played approximately 19 years in the majors spanning a myriad of teams but more importantly if you remember my last video he was also on the 1960 Pirates just like the uh, relief pitcher that I mentioned Joe Gibbon so I was able to get uh, Dick Jr. to sign the father-son card a while back. Um, fortunately there's a little tiny smudge or a thumbprint. I don't know. It's either my thumbprint or Mr. Schofield's. So I sent these in the mail. Sorry about the blurry camera there. I sent these in the mail to Mr. Schofield asking the sign and he gladly obliged. Um, one more thing I want to point out is how Lanier shares this card with Dick. And I've actually seen Hal in person but I didn't have this card at the time so I'm probably in the future going to uh, send that through the mail see if we can get that signed as well. So move these off to the side and the next envelope Looks like it's postmarked from Oakland, California. So let's see who that may be. Again, sorry about the blurry camera. I'm very amateur at this. Ah, okay, yes. Very happy to get these back. These are one, two, three, and four. From Mr. Ernie Brolio. Now, Mr. Brolio is famous for uh, a few things. Uh, number one, he was in infamy the person that the St. Louis Cardinals traded for a little known outfielder at the time to the Chicago Cubs named Lou Brock. 
as you can see from the 1960 ERA leaders card, Brolio was, you know, one of the top starters in the game at the time. You know, others on this card like, um, let's see, who is it? Don Drysdale, Bob Friend, Stan Williams, and Mike McCormick. You know, Brolio was a one heck of a pitcher. So, going for a playoff run, the Cardinals decided to trade Mr. Brolio. Huh, that one has a hole punch in it. I just noticed that. Somebody must have had it tacked on their wall or something at one point. Um, the Cardinals traded Mr. Brolio for Lou Brock, and as many of you know, if you're a Cardinal fan, the rest is history. The uh, It's gone down as one of the most infamous trades maybe similar to Milt Pappas for Frank Robinson. You know, again, Milt Pappas was a good ball player, but he sure wasn't Frank Robinson. And um, the same with the Brock for Brolio trade. So very happy to get that back. Thank you, Mr. Brolio. Uh, okay. Let's see what else we have here. Uh, this one is a larger envelope. I sometimes send larger envelopes in the mail to people and you'll see why in a second. Well, it looks like he just put the cards in there. I mean, I'm glad they were protected. But this is from Mr. Ben Ogilvy. And Ben Ogilvy, I also again have seen in person before, but I did not have these oversized cards at the time. Um, I like to say I'm kind of a sucker for the oversized 5x7 cards. Uh, this in particular is what you call a Donner's Champion. And um, they had what they also called Donner's Action All-Stars. Um, I love to collect these just because they're oddball. They're not your standard, you know, cards like the tops and the Fleer here. They are a little unique. Um, I have many of them already signed. Unfortunately, when I saw Mr. Ogilvy, I either wasn't thinking to get this card signed, or I didn't have it at the time, or whatever. So, Mr. Ogilvy was kind enough to sign a couple through the mail for me, along with a couple small cards, as you can see there. Um, few things about Mr. Ogilvy. He was um, kind of a, uh, how do I say this? He was a unique player. He was a, um, played left field mainly in his career. He was a very good hitter. Um, started out with the Boston Red Sox, later came to Detroit, but he really hit his stride when he signed with the Milwaukee Brewers. And, um, he is a lifetime, let's see, 273 hitter, it looks like. So he didn't quite have a uh, high batting average, but he had some pretty peak seasons that were pretty pretty exceptional. I mean, in one year he batted 304, hit 41 home runs. I don't think he won the MVP that year in 1980, but by any stretch of the imagination, he had a very, very good year. Um, he uh, played on the Brewers, made the All-Star team three times. He won the Silver Slugger Award. I would imagine that year that he hit the 41 home runs and batted over 300. Um, don't think he ever won a World Series. Um, went to the World Series, but lost to the St. Louis Cardinals, I believe, in 1982. But uh, I had a chance to actually meet Mr. Ogilvy one time when he, in person. Uh, he was a hitting coach for a single A affiliate baseball team, I believe, at the time. Um, when I met him, he was very cordial and very friendly to the autograph seekers that were there to get him. He basically came out of the hitting uh, cage or hitting room, whatever you want to call it, at the minor league stadium 
and we sat down at a picnic table and each one of us, I would say there was maybe five to six, maybe seven of us at most that were waiting there, you know, getting autographs from, from the prospects on the team and of course we wanted his autograph and he sat down at the table and he just basically signed whatever he handed to him. Um, I think at the time I got like four cards signed and they were just, you know, regular sized cards like the ones, you know, here and like I said, I regret now going back to uh, getting in a few more uh, of these oversized cards back in the day. But, you know, when you're younger and in college, you don't have a lot of the uh, means of uh, financial means, I should say, to uh, finance your collection. So you kind of have to do, do with what you have. So very happy. Thank you, Mr. Ogilvy, for the return. I also have one more that I was going to go over here, and that is also an oversized envelope. And I opened this one only because I uh, couldn't remember who it was, <laughs> so that's why I opened this one ahead of time. So um, normally I stick a small envelope in here to go inside to protect the oversized cards. Um, I usually write a short note on the front, like, you know, please return this so it protects the cards. Unfortunately, uh, sometimes that doesn't happen, and I'm just fortunate enough that the uh, cards make it back without getting wet or, you know, thrown in the snow or something. So, with that being said, I have one more success here, and that is from Mr. Billy Gardner. And this is one of my favorite postcard sets here. This is a 1961 Yankees postcard set that came out, oh, let me see here, in the 1990s, I want to say, maybe the late 80s. It doesn't have a copyright on the back. But uh, this is one of those things that I forgot I had. And I was going through some of my old sports stuff from, you know, the my childhood basically and I came across this 61 Yankees postcard partial set and I say partial set because I'm pretty sure like the Mickey Mantle wasn't there and you know a couple other of the bigger stars Whitey Ford wasn't there so basically I had the uh, commons out of the set and I was going through them and uh, did my research to see who was still alive off the 61 team and I came across Billy Gardner so I went and found some uh, 87 tops traded here for Mr. Gardner when he was a manager. There's a brief stint with the Royals. I want to say he also managed the uh, Orioles. I may be wrong though. But um, Mr. Gardner uh, gladly obliged in signing my 61 tops postcard. I've got a few of them. Maybe I'll show them sometime to you guys. But uh, I've seen a few of the guys in person actually that were off that team none of the big stars or anything i would say the biggest one i've seen in person was uh ralph terry got that signed last year sometime and um i've seen uh let's see i want to say another relief pitcher you know you know not a big name by any stretch of the imagination i've uh, gotten bobby richardson back through the mail on this before uh, hector lopez who's still living uh, he signed one for me. So uh, maybe I'll show those to you some other time. But uh, I want to thank you for uh, another installment of uh, Through the Mail Thursdays. And I look forward to uh, hearing from you and uh, replying to some of your comments. Thanks.